Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images. Um, I'm going to have a quick chat today about how long your prints are going to last. In particular, I'm looking at prints made with the Epson 8500, 8550 ink tank printers, eco tank printers. So you fill them up and, and yeah, ink is cheaper because you fill it from bottles. What made me think about this? Two things really. One is that I've been testing this Nepson print scanner and um, it's mighty effective. Um, as you can see, it scans prints at a hell of a rate. Um, it's very fast, mainly for archiving purposes. If I was scanning something for making big print from, I'd use a proper flatbed printer, a better quality scanner. But this is made for speed and convenience. But anyway, one of the pictures I've got here, and uh, this is a print from ooh, 1981, if I recall right. And the paper is browned slightly. Uh, the print has lost quite a bit of its colours. Pictures of some daisies that I took for some unknown reason uh, a long while ago. Uh, but I've got lots and lots of packs of these prints. Well, not lots and lots, but you know, quite a fair few packs of these prints. And some of them show decided fading. And this is in, what are we talking, 30 odd years. So. These have not been out in albums. These have been no more than these have been kept in these packs. And most of the time, certainly in the last 15, 20 years, they've been in some drawers here. So they've not been exposed to the atmosphere. Um, there's no particular contaminants likely to damage them or anything. Here's a scan showing a picture that for some reason I took of a roundabout in Nice. Um, I was there for some reason. I have no idea why I took this picture. But here's the picture scanned. Here's the picture after the software with this has done a bit of improvement to try and correct the colours and make for a better looking picture. It works rather well. Um, now, I will be doing a, a more detailed review of this uh, in due course, but I said there were two things that made me think about longevity of prints. Well, apart from that, I regularly get asked about it, is that I discovered the Wilhelm results uh, print permanence ratings, and these are sort of, you know, sort of not uh, final results, these are working results, and they give me some information about how long prints made with the Epson 8550 are likely to last. Now, I'm just going to move this over here so I can actually read it a bit easier. Print permanence ratings. Uh, there are several institutes, uh, organisations that do print permanence testing. What does print permanence testing mean? Because obviously they don't have time machines, so you can't sort of take a print made on a particular paper with a particular printer, um, you know, send it 25 years in the future and measure what's happened to it. So they use what's called accelerated testing, which is exposing things to bright lights, uh, exposing them to different atmospheres and things like that, and then try and extrapolate on the basis of previous tests Testing, what a suspect, you know, what a particular print is likely to last. Now, these these do vary, and um, we've got the examples here, and this is for the 8500 and the 8550. They give, uh, and the two papers that have been tested in this are Epson Ultra Premium Photo Glossy Paper and Luster Paper. So the current sort of fairly standard papers, um, yeah, moderately good papers from Epson for photo prints. And these are for colour prints. And the interesting bit, the headline numbers are that for displayed prints framed under glass. Now this, is, unlike these photo prints here, this is for prints which have actually been exposed to some daylight. Um, not bright, it, it's, you know, it's assumed normal um, bright light exposure, it, uh, I presume indoors. If you go, if you want to get into this, have a look at all the detailed testing conditions. Somebody asked me why I didn't test printer permanence. Life is too short for me to do stuff like this. I would be bored stiff by it. And more to the point, I don't live in a big enough house where I can put lots and lots of prints out and displayed to sunlight and things like that. Hats off to people who have the patience to do this stuff. I most certainly do not. Uh, there comes a point with an awful lot of things where I get bored and my attention wanders somewhere else. Anyway, 
90 years under, you know, under glass, and there are normal caveats and things with this. Displayed prints framed with a UV filter, so this is with UV glass, greater than 120 years. Displayed prints not framed, so this is frame prints out on their own, 28 years. So, interesting bit here, album dark storage rating, 73, you know, including paper yellowing. This is if they've been stored nominally in conditions like this, greater than 200 years. So, would I be concerned with pictures that I've printed on the 8500, 8550 on those papers? Remember, it's specific for papers. This lifetime stuff is very much about the inks, the papers. Um, third party papers might well last longer. They might last a lot less. If you use uh, cheap replacement so-called compatible inks, sometimes these figures, particularly the bare bulb ones, so in other words, stuff open to the atmosphere, those figures might be reduced to six months before you see any difference on it. Cheap paper, cheap inks. Well, you get what you pay for, very much so in, the case, in this case. So those are the conditions of that. Now, these, there's a lot of research goes on, and if you read the papers on this, you'll find lots and lots of details about why this testing is supposed to work. Uh, the industry certainly seems to think it's good, um, because the thing is, these, these trials take so long that unless you've got a fair bit of spare money and it's worthwhile to you in marketing terms, the expense of conducting tests like this, they're not cheap. That's why, um, you know, third party paper suppliers, even very good ones like, uh, say, Innova, I use their papers quite a bit, uh, Red River in the States, um, Permajet, Photospeed, you know, Paper Spectrum here. Um, there is no way you're going to get paper permanent print permanence measurements. And of course you need to do this for every different printer. Um, now the 8500, 8550 are similar enough that it makes no real difference, but you would need to do this for everything for testing. So take these figures as a guidance. Um, so that's the results for color. I just noticed on the next page, and I know all the details that we've got for black and white prints. Now, remember that black and white on the uh, if you're using this paper, if you're using the glossy or the luster paper settings, and on the, uh, on the 8500, 8550, you would be using the premium semi-gloss media setting for uh, the luster paper, because there isn't a, a luster paper, or there wasn't when I tested it. We've got displayed under glass, glass greater than 140 years. Um, even the bare bulb, so open to the atmosphere ones, says 37 years. So that's quite good for black and white, even ones that are you know, just stuck on a wall like this. Um, now, you put them behind glass, they last a lot longer. Why the difference between black and white and colour? Well, some colours are weaker and we see colour shifts. There is not much colour ink used in the mix when printing black and white. Um, I would notice that uh, the 8550 has a pigment black. You might say, ah, if I'm using printing on an art paper, using the VFA setting, for example, which does a mix of the, you know, the, the pigment black, the pigments will last longer than this. These are dye, dye inks. Um, the pigments will last longer, but the fade will still happen. So I would say if you're printing onto a good art paper, an archival paper, say uh, a cotton rag paper that's acid free and is, you know, as mentions archival in the marketing you know, materials for it, where it says for black and white here, 140 years, um, I'm going to say that even if you um, have the prints out on their own exposed to the atmosphere, it's unlikely you're going to notice much of a difference even in 40 years. Actually protect them in some way and nobody, you or your immediate descendants are likely to notice it. And that comes down to, you know, what you actually want from permanence. These prints here, um, I say the ones from 1980 are showing a distinct 
discoloration from the paper. I can see how the paper, you can just see it from the edge of the prints. The paper has taken a slight tint now. And if I look at some of the other prints and things I've got, I've been testing here. Some of them, the colors have drifted all over. These are also from, this is from 1980s somewhere. There is a, a, a print where the color has drifted massively. Um, that, fortunately, I have the negatives for most of these, which means that if I really, really wanted to do something with these, uh, other than illustrate how dismal some of my photography was 30, 40 years ago, uh, long before I decided to take up photography for a living. Um, but if I wanted that, I'd use the negatives. Um, but they're still there. Um, if you've got other, other prints loose in a box somewhere, you will see that fading. In, you know, the, the inks on the 8550 are lasting longer than that. How does this apply to other printers? Um, see if you can find some uh, information on the Wilhelm site. That's your best starting point. Other than that, um, if you want your prints to last, keep them out of light. Keep them in a drawer if need be, interleave them with tissue paper for particularly precious ones, but you know, take care of them. The other thing is if they're digital images, think about a digital archiving strategy. JPEGs, um, the format is so ubiquitous, I cannot really envisage a time when you won't be able to read JPEG files. Um, so they, it should not be too much of a problem to think about this if it's important to you. Um, I'm 64 now, so barring totally unexpected developments in uh, medicine and other areas, I don't expect any of these figures to be of the slightest concern to me personally. Um, now, from a marketing point of view, why yes, I'll make use of these figures, but do they actually mean anything to me personally? I'm not going to be here, so, you know, um, the amount I can truly care about it is limited somewhat. Um, but I have made sure that all my various files and things will be preserved, hopefully. Um, I suspect raw files will continue to be readable just because of the sheer number of them about. Uh, it's going to happen. But if you're worried about this, have a read of some of the Wilhelm stuff of that. But be prepared. It can be quite a hard read. Um, so there you have it. I hope that's of some interest. Um, suffice to say, 8550 pro I have no problem. Yeah. Are they sellable? Yes, they are. Are they sellable as archival prints and, you know, sort of high-end fine art prints? Uh, depends on how old you are and um, your business and all sorts of other things. I'd say not, but then that's just my opinion. Anyway, I hope that was of some interest. Um, if you've got questions on stuff like this, please do ask. Uh, always, it gives me ideas for videos, if nothing else. Thanks very much for watching. And oh, as I should say at the start, please do pass this on to anyone you think might be interested and subscribe to the channel, etc., etc., all the usual YouTube stuff. Thanks very much. Bye.